Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. My name is V and in today's video we're going to talk about fashion. So um, I also wanted to say that every photo, every image, every information used in this video will be linked in the bio. So if you're just interested yourself to go and read about it, then the link is going to be in the bio so yeah i hope you guys enjoy don't forget to comment like subscribe and yeah i will see you guys in the next video bye in 1961 when ysl founded his fashion house in paris he took a very revolutionary take on women's clothing and men's clothing and brought it to a whole nother level at this time he was not only one of the few fresh new designers of his age and time so when YSL founded his um, his fashion house in Paris 1961, um, he not only revolutionized the industry and the textile industry at that time, but he also um, has a great impact as to what we see nowadays. During YSL's early careers, he was discovered by a French writer who published his um, sketches on French Vogue and from there was appointed to meet Christian Dior. When he met Christian Dior, he had to do his sketches and drawings for Christian Dior and he was immediately, immediately hired by Christian Dior as assistant designer. So this was a huge take for um, Saint Laurent and his career. So he started to work as assistant designer for Christian Dior, started working for Christian Dior at 17. So that is all, that is also goes to say that um, he started in the peak of his career, so he actually got a great mentor to help him um, learn the basis of his art and what he actually wanted to do. He actually helped him um, build the foundation of his craft, so that's actually really amazing. He was mostly known for his dresses. So he created also dresses during this time for plays and show and tea. Now in 1957 is when the most traumatic experience happened, Dior's death. Now during Dior's death, obviously it was a very sad, everyone was sad because as I mentioned, Dior was one of the few famous and popular designers at that time. So he was really grateful for Dior and after his death, he was appointed as the success as the successor of Christian Dior, being the youngest hot couture designer of his time. In 1960, Saint Laurent was called back to fight for independence of his country because all the men were called. After the war, he came back to Paris to, um, to continue his job at Christian Dior. But when he came back, he realized that he lost his job at Dior. For him to come back and not find his job was really traumatizing and he had like a really nervous breakdown. He sued Dior for breach of contract and during the suing, he won 48,000 pounds. He later then with, P with Pierre Burge, they both went and invested to start up their own fashion house in Paris. So in 1962, YSL presented his first collection under his house in Paris. This first collection was a huge success. The first presentation of the collection was the ultimate was the ultimate set for the foundation of the brand. So the pea coat was worn with Shangtun white pants and mules shoes. Now in, uh, in comparison with the styles with, that was very popular at the time, um, he, they almost felt like he was um, bringing something new and something fresh to the audience. Because instead of the hinge waist that most people were already used to as by Christian Dior and other brands, he actually freed women from the hinged waist and brought a silhouette that was more loosened. And this, so this assembled paved the way for YSL's signature look that borrowed from men's wear and made women feel powerful and confident. In this time, 
um, women's rights wasn't something that um, was happening. A lot of women were restricted. You only could wear this. You only could wear that. So it was almost like he was freeing the woman and giving women more liberty throughout fashion. After YSL's first collection debuted in 1962, the brand had a huge success afterwards. So YSL's um, white fragrance, that was the first fragrance at the time, and also the homage collection to um, Piet Mondrian, the bridal knitwear collection. When he came back from Morocco, he was really inspired and he was he was really inspired from everything and everything he saw on the streets of Morocco. And since the beginning, he always had this desire to not only create clothing for the billionaires at the time, but he wanted to create clothing for everyone and, any, and anyone. He wanted to make clothing more accessible. And he even said it in the interview that he wanted to create clothing from the woman walking down on the street to the subway, from the street corner, everything and everywhere. So when he punched and open his first um, ready-to-wear store in Paris in 1962. This store was called Rive Gauche. I hope that I'm spelling that correctly. So yeah, this store was called Rive Gauche and it was one of the first collection and the first collection for a ready-to-wear and he was actually credited as one of the first designer who invented ready-to-wear. And after, when he created Ready to Wear, he also said that he wanted the craftsmanship to stay the same. So he wanted the craftsmanship to stay the same, the craftsmanship of designing, but still making the clothing more accessible. 1966, Saint Laurent made the female chest visible. The start of the sexual revolution of the 60s. The nude look was born and created. He created a, a completely transparent dress with a belt made of oyster feather. It was it's pretty amazing to see how they created pieces that are very timeless, you know. This also symbolizes what was going on at the time during that period of time, I would say, because during this period of time, the second wave of feminism or women's right and freedom was actually taking a huge 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 turn so by creating this dress this was also very liberating as you see how what is happening in the world also affects a lot of what what is going to happen in the fashion industry or what is happening within the fashion industry because also introduced another of his um iconic most iconic looks of the time and that was the tuxedo the tuxedo he introduced it in the autumn winter collection of 1966 so at the same period that he introduced the um sheer collection and this was an explosion as i was saying this is also a very interesting side of the story because this garment was actually made for smoking rooms so men would wear this garment to go in a smoke room and to have their smoke and eventually this garment what would do is it will protect their clothing from getting the smell of cigarettes used only for men and he drew inspiration from this and created the tuxedo but for women and he originally created this look for his hot couture client hot what couture client but only one was sold now he later on created a similar version for his rive watch collection and the young clientele that he had for his rive watch collection actually made this piece a huge success so by creating this item what it did was give the confidence and power that woman teens and early 2000 this look was really really popular popularized by ysl during their runway shows and their ready to wear shows so a lot of these looks you can see back in mainstream fashion. 
After the continued success of creation of YSL, a lot of his signature looks symbolized the brand and not only that but he also created like the smoking, the safari jacket, um, he was also credited with the pantsuit, the first jumpsuits and many many more. Hope you guys enjoyed, don't forget to comment, like, subscribe and yeah, I will see you guys.